Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a hazy winter scene. This one was so much fun to paint. I've never played with this much color for landscape painting before so I'm very excited to share this one with you guys. Like usual, I started out by masking the sides first to make sure that the paper is secure. I just use ordinary masking tape like usual and because I'm working on a drawing pad, I pull back the masking tape so the paper will be adhered to the rest of the drawing pad. This painting was based on a photo that I found and I really love the pinks and the cool grey against the warm yellows so I tried to create my own interpretation of this image. Here I just tried to map out the basic composition to help me divide up the page so I know where to put the elements that I want to include in the painting. This does not have to be accurate but I just want the basic idea of the viewpoint and perspective of the land, water and also to give enough space to paint the trees at the back. Before we start to paint, let me just go over the colors that I'll be using. Firstly on the left, this is Moon Glow by Daniel Smith, followed with Hansi Yellow Light by Daniel Smith, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, John Brilliant No. 2 by Holbein, Indigo by Schmincke, and Sepia by Holbein. I'll also be using bleed proof white but this is completely optional as I'm only going to use that to clean out the edges at the end. I'm going to first work on the base color for the bottom portion of the painting so I'm just going to wet that whole area while leaving the top completely dry. I'm separating the area so I can have more control over the wetness of the surface while I'm painting. I'm going to start by painting the snow. I use a mixture of indigo with a little bit of moon glow and also a little bit of quin red. I wasn't sure what tone I'd like so I ended up just mixing these three colors but it doesn't matter too much because we're only painting the base color for now so we're only using a very thin consistency on top of the wet surface which is going to make the color even lighter when it's completely dry. I will leave the photo at the bottom left but I'm only going to take the basic idea of it instead of painting every single thing on the picture. So here I'm just going to paint the snow instead of the snow covered plants and I'm going to do this for the whole ground area while leaving the water. I'm doing this by adding random marks with the tip of my brush without too much pressure and whenever I'm unsure about where to put the dark blues, I use the picture as a rough reference to find which area to darken. I can see very faintly a touch of the pinks on where the light from the sky reflects on the snow so I'm going to just add it on. I used a mix of Quinn Red with Tron Brilliant but my brush had a little bit of the blue residue which muted the pink slightly. I felt like the pink was a bit too cool so I ended up adding a touch of Hansi Yellow Light to the mix and I'm also going to apply this color very lightly to that patch of land on the top right. Next, I mixed the same colors of Queen Red, John Brilliant, and Yellow, but this time I made sure my brush is completely clean so I can get a very vibrant pink that I used in a medium consistency to paint the edges of the land at the top and also the water reflection at the bottom while also alternating this with the muted pink for added interest. I'm also going to paint the reflection for the land on the right. Then I'm going to follow this up by using a very light consistency of the coral pink and I'm just going to do a very light wash underneath the reflection that I just painted. After that, I'm going to use the light consistency of yellow with a touch of that coral pink to warm up the yellow slightly and I'm going to apply this to the right hand side of the water. After a while, the colors that I painted earlier should disperse slowly so you can see the blues and the pinks that I painted for the snow is now quite light. So I'm going to darken certain areas again, still using a very light consistency because I don't want the snow to look too dark. So I'm being very careful since we're still going to keep layering as we progress with the painting. Okay. 
Okay, at this point I'm quite happy with how I've mapped out the base color for the bottom half of the painting. Now I'm going to work on the top portion by first wetting the surface so I can work with the wet on wet technique again. I want the sky to be more orangey so I mixed yellow with the coral pink to make it a bit more orange and I'm going to use the light consistency to paint the left hand side first and just like the reference picture I want the left side to be a little bit darker and the right to be more of a light yellow so as I progress to the right hand side I made sure that the orange mix is much lighter then I follow this up with light consistency yellow and once I place the colors I added more pigment if I felt like the color won't be saturated enough Next I'll be painting the trees. I use a mix of Moon Glow, John Brilliant, and Quin Red in a medium consistency while the top portion of the painting is still wet so the paint will just bloom and travel creating a soft transition. For this, I just looked at the reference very roughly to get ideas of different shapes and heights of the trees and also the bushes. As I get to the right hand side where the light source is, I also want to make the trees a bit lighter so I added more Jean Brilliant and a bit more Quin Red in the mix and as for the trees closest to the right hand side, I also turned the color into more of an orange by adding Hansi Yellow Light. This does not have to just follow one direction from the purple, pink to the orange, but sometimes I like to mix them up as long as we get the idea across the overall value. Here I tried adding more colors because I felt like I didn't have enough pigment, but because the paper was almost dry, I ended up disturbing the pigment which is why you can see the unwanted bloom. So when you're working on wet on wet, make sure that the paper is evenly damp before you add on more pigments. But since I'm still going to layer on more things on top of this, I'm just going to keep adding more pigments and leave it as is. You can see that as the paint dries, the paint does not settle as nicely as the first layer. And to avoid this, it's better to let the first layer completely dry and just re-wet the surface and start the wet on wet process again to separate the layer. Next, I'm going to add on the tree branches. I'm adding sepia and quin red to the indigo pile that I have on my palette. And I'm going to use a thin consistency of this to paint the branches and the tree trunks on the blobs that I painted earlier. The reason why I'm using a thin consistency is so that the trees look like they're further back near the light and the color of the branches should balance out the light colors that we painted earlier. I also made sure that the main trunk is a bit darker than the branches, so the branches look much more delicate compared to the tree trunks. I also forgot to mention that I switched to my liner brush for this because it really helps with the delicate lines of the branches. For the bushes, if I want the branches to be finer, I use an even lighter consistency and it's okay if the value and consistency is slightly different for all the trees. For the trees further back or closer to the light source, I added a bit of Jean Brilliant to the mix to lighten the color. I tried to make most of the trunks and branches a bit more visible for the trees at the front and a bit lighter for the ones at the back. At the moment, the trees look like they're floating, so I wanted to darken the snow by using the same mix as the branches, but I also want to switch the colors around by using the same mix with indigo that I have on my palette for added interest. Again, I'm just working in a light consistency because I don't want the snow to look too dark and overworked, especially when I'm working with a dark value color. 
For the snow on the right hand side, I'm going to use the orange mix from John Brilliant with Hansa Yellow Light. And then using the same color with an even thinner consistency, I'm going to add light retextures textures using my small size zero brush so it's easier to work with a dry brush load. At first, I use a light load to paint thin grassy textures and then I smudge some areas. As for the larger parts, I work with a medium load and I just smudge it until I run out of paint so I continue on with a dry brush texture. For the right hand side, I used the orange mix with added Quin Red to paint textures on the snow. Then I added grassy reed textures on top so it looks like a silhouette. At the bottom, I'm going to use the branch color mixture to darken the bottom portion while the pink is still a bit wet so everything is just going to blend nicely together. I'm going to let that dry for now and move back to the left section where I'm going to add the snow texture again. I'm using a purple mix from Indigo with the branch mixture but you can also use Moon Glow if you don't have access to those colors on your palette. I'm being very careful and using a very light consistency and I'm just painting random parts of the snow so the ground look less smooth. I make sure that my brush is mostly horizontal so the snow looks more leveled out. On the left, I use a thicker consistency of the purple and use a dry brush load while holding my brush horizontally and pulling upwards to create dry brush grass textures. I'm going to make this one quite tall and I'm going to alternate the color with the purple mix and the red purple mix from the branches earlier and if I want to darken certain parts, I would just add a bit more indigo in the mixture in a thicker consistency. Using the same mixture as the grass with a bit more indigo, I used this deep purple to line the bottom of the snow pile in a medium consistency and I made sure that the lines that I create are jagged and uneven. And as I get towards the right, I'm going to turn the color a bit lighter by adding more Quin Red and then John Brilliant. But just before the paint dries, I'm going to use my clean dry brush to pull diagonally so it gives the impression that the snow pile is slightly higher than the water surface. If the paint is mostly dry, then you can add a bit of water on your brush to reactivate the paint and pull the same way as what I'm doing here. I think by now you've seen all the color mixtures that I used for this painting so I'm just going to refer them as their hues instead of each mixture with every single color. So for the snow pile on the right hand side, I want the top portion to be lighter so I used the pink followed with the red purple and on the right hand side, I want it to be darker so I added more indigo with the red purple and used a dry brush to create the same grassy texture on the left but this time I made it larger because this is closer to our view. Just like before, I alternate the color with the red-purple but this time in a thicker consistency to darken the value because of the backlight. I also added thinner grass near the water and also over the edges so the composition doesn't look too static. After working on the snow, we can see a good range of values, so now I'm going to balance out the water. I'm going to layer on a thin consistency of purple with indigo and quin red in a medium consistency while leaving a little bit of an outline near the edge to separate the dark values. Then I soften the color with a clean damp brush so it blends with the rest of the water. And I'm also going to do the same for the top section with the Jean Brilliant and quin red mix. Here I lightly re-wet the surface again and then with the same pink mix in a very thin consistency, I blend the color softly following the purple. On the right, I felt like the pink was a bit too far from the purple in terms of value and hue so I'm just going to layer on more purple on top to make the light placement a bit more consistent. Whenever parts of your painting dries and fades or you need to change the color, you can always go back to them to build the value when needed, just like what I'm doing here. That is why it's much easier to work in a thinner consistency and build up the colors. I'm going to work on the dark values now, so I'm going to use a thick consistency of this purple mix. And using my liner brush, I'm just going to create dry tree branches. I use my liner brush and put more pressure and quite a heavy load for the main stem. And as I get to the tip of the branches and as the load runs out of my brush, the lines will become much lighter. I also like to play with the height and weight of the lines and I'm just going to keep adding more until I'm happy with the weight of the composition.
I'm also going to add more grass textures, still using a dry brush load so the lines can be fine and a little bit textured. I'm just going to jump around the painting, but the main idea is that I use this lighter color for the elements closer to the light, but because I'm adding detail now, I'm working mostly in a thick consistency. Here I added small branches as well, but I don't want the weight to be heavier than the left side, so I'm going to keep the branches small and thin, and I'm also going to add tiny little foliage. Around the edges of the bottom, I'm going to add more textures. This is because that area looks a bit empty and I feel like this added detail will just help direct our eyes to the focal point, which are the dried trees on the left. And I'm also going to add some tiny dried leaves on some of the tree branches as well. After this, I'm going to go back to the water reflection. I just want a very light glaze of pink with a dry brush texture, so I'm just going to use my large brush again. So here's the mistake that I made of this painting. If you guys didn't realize, at this point I forgot to paint the reflection of the dried tree branches because that was an additional element that wasn't part of the reference image. and. I didn't pay too much attention to it, so if you're painting this, I feel like the composition will probably look much better with the tree reflection as well on the water surface, so don't forget to do that if you're painting along to this. Around the edges of the water reflection, I also built up the color similar to the edges of the snow, so I ended up using a medium load of the purple mix and then softening the edges with a clean damp brush. And here I'm just going to balance out the values of the snow, so I'm just going to add a bit more texture around the edges with the darker values right at the edge and a lighter consistency value at the top part of the snow pile just to help build the depth. Going back to the foreground, I'm going to darken the color again to create more of a backlight effect and I feel like those reeds are just floating so I'm going to add more grassy textures while alternating from the dark purple to quin red to an orange mix to give a glowing effect from the backlight as well. So here I'm pretty much done with all the elements except for the missing water reflection which I forgot to do but from here on I'm basically just going to finish off the final details to balance out the overall composition. So once I'm done, I'm just going to unmask all of the sides and I'm going to clean some of the edges which kind of bled out with bleed proof white. So this is the completed painting, despite the pretty big mistake I made, I think this is my favorite scenery that I've painted so far, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one as well. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!